Hello YouTube, this is Dakota from Bowtie Media, and today I've got a brand new review of the brand new KX5 album, KX5. A year after the debut single, the KX5 album is officially here. For those of you that don't know, KX5 is the duo alias of both Cascade and Deadmau5 coming together to make KX5. That makes sense. Having worked together for more than a decade so closely, it was finally time for the two of them to cement a kind of large scale collaboration project. And we finally got that with KX5. At this point in Progressive House's history, it's hard to find many artists that have been as consistently good as both Cascade and Deadmau5 have been. With this album being no exception. In fact, I would say this is easily the best project from either producer in the past decade. KX5 is your quintessential no-nonsense progressive house record. At 10 tracks in length and just over 40 minutes of runtime, this album is full of quality tunes from front to back. Unlike other previous records from Deadmau5 specifically, where you would get a ton of long runs of instrumental tracks that would all kind of culminate into one, two, or maybe even three kind of real singles on an album, all 10 of these tracks could have been released as a single. I think what stands out to me most about this record is how true they stayed to their core sounds. Other than pandering to a more commercial audience and or changing their sound for something different of sorts, uh, KX5 is a fusion of all the best elements of Cascade and Deadmau5. Take Escape, for example, the lead single featuring Hala. With long atmospheric builds and quality synth leads, this feels like the modern progressive house track. I particularly love the very strong vocal performance from Hala and how the track doesn't fall into the kind of, I would say, trap of needing a sort of grand drop and letting that build well, build very naturally. It's a style that I think has sort of been lost on the modern progressive house producers of this day, where you still feel like they need to have some big drop moment and like a, a, a empty space in that last bar. But no, it's just, it, this is what it is. It just slowly builds and builds and builds and then it comes back slowly and it comes back and then just slowly back and forth and it is great. But speaking of newer kind of traps, uh, Bright Lights with Arco has a distinctly slap house uh, baseline to it. Okay, I'm a little overdramatic with the word trap there, uh, but the newest fad of Slap House has seldom come with accompanying high quality that I found in the last year. So to hear tropes of that kind of girthy bass line and male humming that you would normally hear on a Slap House track, uh, but find it on something that is genuinely high quality is a sight to behold. And even the way that these vocals are processed doesn't make it sound like your sort of bread and butter commercial appealing slap house track. The way that the vocals are processed and the vocal performers themselves are just mwah, so good on this record. I feel like they've really honored the unique tones of each and every vocalist that has been added for a feature here on this record. Sophie from Sophie Tucker is a great example on the song Sacrifice. Sophie Tucker themselves play around with a vocal processing that matches their very club centric beats in a way that doesn't really utilize Sophie's full vocal range. I've been listening to Sophie Tucker for honestly years now and it's not something that's really bothered me in any sense and I think it really matches the style of what they're going for. But to hear the prowess that Sophie really has in her voice, wow, I genuinely have never heard it in all the years I've been listening to Sophie Tucker. On top of that, the production from this track makes it my favorite of the album. The hard juxtaposition of Sophie's kind of airy vocals to the very invasive pounding drops, this track just does a beautiful, like, good versus evil-like dance. And something that I find most prominent in this track, but also applies to the whole record, is the fantastic mixing and mastering. It's what I think really separates KX5 from other progressive house producers out there right now. Everything is so clean, polished, and just natural sounding. This is one of the few records where I was genuinely amazed by the mixing I was hearing. It's an art form that is so intricate, but so crucial to get so right, or else the whole thing is just gonna fall flat. It's a strength of both Cascade and Deadmau5 that they've had over the decades of production that, you know, in the end, I think this might be the best sounding, the best mixed album of either of their discographies. Rather than venturing into new territory, this record feels holistically like a love letter to the last decade and a half of progressive house music. Utilizing all the iconic motifs and sounds from an era of music, KX5 brings it all together in one place. From the more underground sounds of Eat Sleep to the nostalgic riddled techno beats from Take Me High, Oh, I, I really, really enjoyed this record. For such a time and place in the musical landscape where house music feels a little all over the place right now, KX5 reminds us of where we've been and all the friends we've made along the way. And in the end, KX5's KX5 will score a Bowtide 8 out of 10. But thank you so much for watching. Let me know what you think of this review. Let me know what you think of this record. What do you think? KX5, Cascade Dead Bus. Love to hear any and all in the comment section below. Other than that, I'm Dakota, and this has been Bowtide Media, and I'll see you guys in another video.